Hey everyone, so in this video, I am pleased to announce Battle Pass Season 2. The first Battle Pass that came to the game went over extraordinarily well, and honestly, I think it's the best value that has been introduced into the game. You get the most bang for your buck with this Battle Pass, and honestly, I was even tempted to buy Battle Pass 1. Now we have a second Battle Pass that'll be coming out very soon. The S-Class tunes and cards that you can look forward to in the Season Store will be S-Class Negan cards, S-Class Alpha, both her cards, as well as her 5-star Ascendable, S-Class Mateo cards, as well as his 5-star Ascendable, and an added treat that I think is a great addition, especially for newer players or players grinding for a second princess, S-Class Princess cards, as well as a 5-star Ascendable S-Class Princess, while well, 5-star Ascendable on the way to being an S-Class Princess. We also have our typical Brady's, as well as our WD Crate 2, which has an assortment of gear that is definitely much appreciated by the player base. Now, the value from this Battle Pass really comes from the missions, where you can only complete the top tier of missions, the full mission, by purchasing the Battle Pass key. Now, as an added treat for this season, just for reaching tier 30 and having the Battle Pass key, you will get the sturdy, infectious assault rifle. And this is exactly what you think it is. 30% HP, a very large bonus to AP when attacking, and the third slot, when attacking, a great chance to cause 25% infection for three turns. And the fourth slot, for every 20% AP, heal 5% max HP. Now, what makes this weapon amazing, and I'm pretty sure you're, you already picked up on it, is that it can cause infection on attack, and we know how effective infection can be. Now, keep in mind the wording here. A great chance equals about a 50% chance to cause that 25% infection. Now, please keep in mind that infection works in a very specific way where if you have a 15% infection, say from the traitor, but then you attack with this weapon on that tune, it will replace the two turn 15% infection with a three turn 25% infection because it is a higher percent of infection. So you definitely want to be very careful with this type of weapon if you plan on running it on an infection attack team. Now, other areas of a game where you can definitely use this include survival road, it includes raids, it includes onslaught for sure. Onslaught would be a great area to use this weapon. You could infect people without having an actual infection tune and it's a great way to apply this skill. You can have a hundred percent heal reduction applied. There's just so many ways that you can manipulate and use this weapon. It might be a little slow on a war team for example, especially an auto one, where there might be some healing in effect, so it could be difficult to apply infection and keep it applied to the character without any healing. But overall, this weapon is a gem. And I myself, as a free-to-play player, got all the way up to tier 30. Now, of course, because I didn't buy the Battle Pass key last season, I wasn't able to get all the rewards, but now I'm even tempted. What's even better about this Battle Pass is that they updated the cards that you can get, so there's a variety of S-Class cards that you can acquire. So far, I've picked up now 400 Jackie cards. Uh, as you scroll through, you can definitely see some very, very good cards. We're now at 900 cards, 1,000 cards, 1,300 S-Class cards, 1,400, and now we actually get a pick of an S-Class tune the five-star ascendable version. So this is a great addition for a lot of different players. Even if you're just starting out in the game, you have a lot of options here. And I like that they give you an option of a yellow, a blue, a green, and a red character. These characters are all greatly different and they all fit in different teams. Arav is a killer. As an S-Class, he is just a killing tune that is great on almost any team. He can fit well behind a Lily lead, who we all kind of got as a free-to-play character from the House of Cards event. 
Wangfa as an S-Class pairs really well with Mateo as well as the Traitor because of his 100% heal reduction active skill on the second turn. Dayu is a very interesting tune, being a lacerator with no bound weapon and active infection skill that is a, I think 150% chance and then her rush which both controls the enemy and applies bleed makes her a very good supporting character. Gao, the last character here, is a little underrated but is kind of like a slower version of Dr. Stevens. His active skill is a 60% AP gain to two other teammates or to self depending on what tunes have the most amount of AP. Now his initial cooldown is on turn 2 and that's why he's a little slower than Dr. Stevens. I do like that he can apply bleed and burn. He has a leadership skill which gives a huge bonus to AP to alert and fast. Now the downside is he only has a 75% heal reduction leader skill but his rush does do area damage so he's actually on a specific team of mine that has attack up when slowed because I use him to nuke teams that use impenetrable defense just as an example. Overall you have four good options for characters and it's all based on your style. Arav is a lot of physical damage. Wangfa is a support tune that works really well with infection. Dayu is a supporting tune herself but she can apply infection herself. Gal can either be a damage dealer or a supporting tune with his AP gain. It really comes down to your style and what you need and what you want. Personally, because I have all these characters as S-Class, I would probably go with Dayu in the end. And with that last 100 Jackie cards picked up, that's a total of 1500 S-Class cards, which is 75% of the way there towards a 5-star ascendable version of an S-Class tune. So that's pretty good. It's 15% of an S-Class character. Along with all the other rewards that you get, there's a bunch of gear boxes in here, there's a bunch of battle pass tokens, there's a bunch of just random items that can be used. There's even a six star amber and you know, the more I look at her, the more I see some form of application that you could use, mainly because of her active skill. It's a turn one focus for four turns. With her follow up ability, as well as her rush, because her rush deals 600% damage and 100% heal reduction for one turn up to three enemies? Well, with an attack up when taunted mod or attack up when slowed, considering she's focused, specifically with attack up when taunted, you could run a very devastating team with her. You would probably only need HP or defense mods on her for her to be effective. And it's kind of a big throwback with Amber because she was a GOAT tune. She was amazing. She was one of the best characters in the game for a long time. Now, this other character that we're getting is Xander. I'm not too thrilled about him, only because he's been in the season store. I think he's been in war recruits. He's been in a lot of different areas of a game. And we just got Slater from the 4th of July event. It would have been cool if they could have incorporated someone like Yellow Nick, the season store tune, just because he was pretty exclusive but still has some use nowadays because a yellow command tune can hold an 8% AP weapon, which can help in a lot of areas of a game, including in war, as well as in arenas where you can't use duplicates sometimes. So it would have been nice to see a different command tune. But as you see, like, I'm just scrolling through all of these different rewards. You see cans, you see trainers, you see there's a Cameron Scar who is in the war recruit wheel as well. So it's a bit of an odd choice to see him here. But he was also a very, very good character when he came out. I would be hesitant to use him now just because of his AP gain. So an angel is a direct counter to him. And then also with his taunt, if you run an attack up when taunted mod, you can just devastate a team, especially if it's a Krista with attack up when taunted, with a splash weapon and her waist knot, just as an example. It's really quite crazy to me how much value is actually in the battle pass, and it's nice to see that, at least in my opinion, the value has increased. I'm seeing more value in this season's battle pass than I did in the last season, and I don't like spending, everyone knows that, but I'm even tempted with this because you get a unique weapon, 
you get some unique characters, you get a lot of S-Class cards, you get a lot of gear, you get platinum mods, you get raid cans, survival cans, sur sorry, survival road cans, you get war cans, you get a bunch of S-Class cards. There's just so many options, there's so much that you can acquire. And in addition to the 30 tiers that we are used to seeing, they've added 10 additional tiers just so that people who purchase more points can possibly get a little bit extra. We're seeing a lot of armory items here and a lot of gear, all of which will definitely be used by any player who gets it, like S-Class tunes needing five times as much gear as before. It's definitely appreciative to have extra gear. There's more S-Class cards that are available, the armory tokens, the varnish, which is super expensive in the uh, league store. Um, there's just so much value that I see here. So if you're thinking about getting the season pass again, I would definitely say do so if you can. If you got season pass one, get season pass two. There is so much value. I, I, I know I keep saying that, but it's so true. Every time I look at this, I'm just thinking how much you're actually saving by getting this instead of getting individual offers. And now I'm just going to briefly go over the S-Class cards and tunes that are in the Season Pass store, just to kind of give you an idea of what they do. I am going to do a separate video, kind of showcasing how each of them would play out in gameplay, so that you guys can see their uses and what would be ideal for them, what situations, just because I'm running out of space and time on this video, well, space on my phone and time in general. So the first character is S-Class Negan. He's an interesting character because he actually is a follow-up specialist, but a follow-up specialist that doesn't gain 100% AP like Arav just doesn't seem as effective as, well, Arav is or how Amber was in the past, just with her killing power as well. Negan's attack stat is already quite high. His rush deals two attacks of 600% damage, 1200% total to one enemy, it and all adjacent enemies get 50% slow for two turns, and then he regains 50% of his max HP. So he's good at countering infection, he's good at preventing the enemy from being able to rush by applying that slow ability. His active skill is a turn two active skill, where he can daze and impair one enemy for two turns and regain 50% AP. This active skill is actually kind of decent, it's good for controlling after you end up killing some enemies and applying that 50% slow, it just gives you a better opportunity to win the match. Like it's kind of funny where you're going to be rushing and you're probably killing someone on turn 2, your follow up is going to activate, and instead of attacking you're going to use the active skill to control the enemy. And still with Negan, you might think, well, those basic attacks, I'm going to trigger reflect, I'm going to trigger payback, I'm going to trigger bide, but his specific weapon prevents him from taking damage from any type of counterattack, excluding lightning reflexes, which technically occurs first. Also keep in mind that his absolute defense type of weapon does mean he can still trigger payback. He won't take any payback damage, but other characters on your team can. Now Negan is only a character that you're going to get, or at least his S-Class cards, you're only going to get them if you buy the battle pass. Now, the next character is one that I'm going to be working towards, S-Class Alpha. This to me is the best character in the season store. She is going to have use so long as S-Class tunes are being used. She has a high attacking stat. Her rush at 76 AP deals three attacks of 400% damage, 1200% total, similar to Negan, to one enemy. All other enemies get minus 50% defense for two turns. So basically, she's able to hit extremely hard. She's a disarming tune, so she's never going to trigger a weapon effect. She has a high likelihood of killing her target, but also applying minus 50% defense to all the other enemies, meaning she's a damage dealer, she's a supporting character, and she's a disarming tune. She also has a turn one active skill where she gains focus, plus 60 crit chance, and 50% attack for 4 turns. She also gains 35% of her max AP. So this is a great combination for this character. The more times she gets a critical hit, the more times she's able to disarm the enemy.
moving on to another character that is quite good, Mateo. Mateo is kind of the introduction to infection in some ways, or at least the grand scheme of infection where you can infect multiple targets at the same time. His rush isn't usually talked about. It's a 66 AP rush. It deals a small amount of damage to a line of enemies. They also get 50% slow, 75% heal reduction, and days for two turns. Basically, it's just a way to control their rush as well as their active skill and prevent some healing because his active skill is a turn one active skill where up to four enemies get 15% infection for three turns, meaning if those four enemies can't recover the infection either by healing or recovering the infection directly as a penalty, they will die after three turns. He also doesn't come with a bound weapon, meaning you could give him something like an absolute defense weapon. And lastly, but certainly not least, is Princess. This character is a longevity character. She fits in so many different teams because of her unique kit. Princess is the epitome of a synergetic character. 76 AP, she deals 1000% damage to a line of enemies. She gains 50% bonus HP while battling on the defensive team. She also gets plus 30% defense for three turns. Now what makes her great is her active skill. Her active skill is a turn two active skill. Up to three enemies get normalized and taunt for three turns. She also regains 35% AP. Normalize being such a powerful asset in this game, it basically turns off specialist skills for a limited time. So paybacks can't payback, command tunes can't command, human shields can't be human shields anymore, and so on. She also has a great specialist skill called Berserker, so every time she takes damage, her attack stat gets buffed, and this can actually stack with other attack stats, or attack buffs I guess, so that includes her weapon. Her weapon is so unique, and it's very simple to make it even better. Just increase the attack, add a huge bonus to AP when attacking, make it a 5 star weapon, add team player 4 which is plus 15% attack and plus 35 crit chance to all tunes adjacent as well as to self and buff the attack a little bit more. Overall, if this is the direction of a season pass moving forward, I am very very excited and I think all of you guys should be too. There's lots of great options in the store for anyone to pick up. There's great value, there's great opportunity to grow and kind of get onto that even footing. Again, I'm going to have more videos coming out about these S-Class characters to kind of give you guys a better idea about how to use them, where to use them, and the mod sets, the weapons, and so on. I'll also be able to show you that infection weapon, and I'll show you what I meant before about how the higher percentage infection will override a lower percentage even if the lower percentage will expire, and I, by expire I mean kill the character faster. I think there's just a lot of intricacies in this game that are sometimes difficult to explain, so a visual will definitely help. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching and listening to my video. Let me know in the comment section below if you're going to pick up the Battle Pass key for Season 2.